Here's the first video in the series where I'll be explaining what's happening under the hood when Snowflake Copilot does this and Q from Amazon does this. We'll cover three main architectural patterns for building text to SQL pipelines. And given that there will be a conceptual overview, doesn't depend on your choice of a framework or a foundation model. With that being said, let's get right into it. Let's start with the base architecture. Uh, we have four main inputs. So the user input, then the overarching prompt template, which will later populate with different bits and pieces. And one of those bits and pieces sample questions and then the expected SQL queries that need to be generated in response to those questions. So that is to help with a few short prompting. And then the table metadata or the schema definition from our database. In this basic architecture, it's pulled at the execution time from the database by just predefined SQL commands, for example, describe table, right? Mm, so all of that is then being packed into this prompt template, and then it's our final prompt. Then we send it off to the foundation model. The foundation model generates a SQL statement, and then if you're being lazy, you can send it to the database directly, but what's recommended is to first validate the syntaxis of the SQL statement. It's easy to do, right? So that's one more kind of safety mechanism. If that syntaxis is not correct, you can catch the exception that you received during the syntaxis validation, incorporate it to your final prompt and send it back to the foundation model and ask it to improve the statement based on the exception that you received. And then imagine generates the final SQL statement, you send it off to the database, and then the same cycle can repeat again. Uh, there could be an error uh, while executing, executing the query. For example, the column name was specified incorrectly or your data is kind of funny, which makes the query fail like, you know, a million things for a query to fail. So you, you do the same thing. You catch the exception and you append the error description to your final prompt and you send it off to the foundation model once again. And only when the query execution is successful do you get your kind of final data set. And then it's up to you how you process it down the line. One of the trade-offs for having such a retry mechanism is the, the time that it takes to, you know, land at the final query. So I saw queries that would do three, four attempts. And it, it's up to you to figure out how much of a latency you can afford, depends on user requirements. So much for the basic architecture. Now let's move on to the basic architecture that is an enhanced uh, with a retrieval augmented generation. The main difference is that here we don't have the metadata here, and that is a very important piece of our final prompt. But rather, we pre-populate our vector store over here with the metadata that we pull either from the database directly, or if we have a data catalog, even better, so we don't need to, to like do direct connection, or a data catalog could be a good idea if you have multiple databases. So all of that, you pre-populate your vector store with your schema definition, with your table metadata. And the execution time, you pull that metadata into your final prompt. Right, that's the only thing that changes. And depending on how you want to implement it, I saw different implementations. I saw this being like a static store, for example, like an open search or whatever vector database that you're using. Or I also saw this populated on the runtime. And that kind of like, I think it's a half assed way to do it on the runtime, but if you have multiple tables, multiple columns, multiple kind of comments to columns, that that worked for me as well. So I, I built solutions where this is populated at the runtime. And also kind of like save up on this infrastructure of having a vector database, which is which is handy. But I guess if we were to imp like implement a service that, that should be serving like a big amount of users concurrently, uh, I think this should be like a static store. And then it's up to you to figure out how frequently you would kind of sync it with a data catalog and the actual database. 
Okay, and the rest of the cycle is, is the same. You have your final prompt, you have your SQL statement, you validate it. If it's not correct, you ask the foundation model to kind of fix it and you execute it against the databases. If there is some error, you try, you ask your foundation model to fix the SQL statement, and then you get your result. Okay, and then the last architecture is very similar to the first two. So it's, it's your kind of choice whether you want to implement this vector store here or you want to kind of pull metadata manually like here. But here, the, like the main difference is that instead of the foundation model over here, we're using a fine-tuned model, right? And to, to have a fine-tuned model, you would, you would be using your foundation model and then a data set for fine tuning and that data set would consist of again the, the expected user inputs and the expected queries that you want your final model to generate so all of that will produce a fine tuned model and the advantage of, of using fine tuned model here is that basically your context will be much smaller for example you could reduce the number of this data set or just get rid of it entirely and also probably just less uh, prompt engineering like in here or in here because your fine-tuned model will be more aware of your kind of your specific use cases and what queries you expect to be written. Um, right, those are three main architectural patterns for building text to SQL kind of sequences. Hope that was useful. Let me know what you think. Have a great day.